Most people recognise the human need for close personal and enduring relationships. Nevertheless, divorce has become increasingly common. This is frequently a source of great pain. The divorce proceedings may also add to distress already caused on both sides and the effects on the children may remain through life. The contemporary expectation seems to be that someone who gets divorced should remarry and second marriages are commonly viewed as a positive sign that somehow or another the person has moved on. The Catholic Church on the other hand seeks to follow the teachings of Jesus that marriage is indissoluble. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. The general claim that divorce is a better option for the sake of the children than continuous strife between the parents seems to be un to underestimate the harm that the process of divorce itself involves. Nevertheless, the Church accepts the legitimacy of seeking le legal separation in sufficiently serious circumstances. A civil divorce may be needed to give legal and social protection to one or other of the partners that cannot be obtained simply by living separately without the backing of the law. Those who divorce normally need help and support should not be subject to stigma or discrimination. Yet, as civil divorce does not truly dissolve the marriage, the divorced person is not free to marry before God or the Church to marry someone else. Sometimes, after investigation, the Church will declare that what appeared to be a valid marriage lacked an essential element such that it was not, in fact, a marriage at all. Pope Francis, the present Pope, has made this process shorter and less arduous than it used to be. This is different from a divorce and is called an annulment. If a marriage is broken down irretrievably, a person has the right to have the Church investigate to see if there are grounds for it to be declared null. Our diocesan chancellor in the Diocese of Hallam has written the following in the light of Pope Francis's changes from the desk of the judic judicial vicar. In 2016, I wrote about Pope Francis' motu proprio mitis judex dominus Jesus and the implica implications it had for the tribunals across the world. Now seems a good time to offer an up-to-date an update on how it is affecting the work of the tribunal here in Hallam. One of the major innovations of Pope Francis' document is the process's behaviour, the shorter process. Processes brevier, the shorter process, which eliminates the need for a standard tribunal hearing. Talking to other judicial vicars from across the country, it seems that some have found this process of immense help, while others are still a bit wary. The difficulty is that the rules of the shorter process are really quite strict. Both ex-spouses must be in full agreement that the process can be used, and that it is immediately obvious to the tribunal that the marriage in question was null. It is often difficult to satisfy these two conditions, so it is sometimes easier to follow the full process. Here in Hallam, the shorter process has been used only twice. Nevertheless, the document brought the work of tribunals to the fore and it seems now that people are much more willing to approach the tribunal with regard to previous marriages, even though some cases are often much more complicated than people realise at first. But one of the undeniable fruits of Pope Francis' document is that people are more aware that seeking a declaration of marriage nullity, colloquially and incorrectly known as an annulment, is not a preserve of the rich or famous, not that it ever was. Another aspect of Metis Udex is that appeals of tribunal decisions are no longer automatic. A person must take part in the process and must ask directly for an appeal to be made in the case of the Diocese of Hallam to the Metropolitan Tribunal of Liverpool. This also has perhaps encouraged people to approach the tribunal if they were afraid that an ex-spouse would not cooperate and deliberately try to derail the nullity process. If no appeal is made, 
then the original decision is the final and definitive one. In short, though Metis Udex is not without its demands, it has done what perhaps Pope Francis intended and made the very thought of a marriage nullity less threatening. If you carry the weight of broken marriages in your life, it would encourage you not to be afraid of approaching the tribunal here in Hallam um, to at least try to resolve issues that might be causing you unnecessary distress. That was signed by Reverend Craig Fitzpatrick, the judicial vicar for the Diocese of Hallam. The Catholic Church continues to bear witness to the indissolubility of marriage by its sacramental discipline. The Catholic Church in England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland sought to acknowledge the pain caused by this discipline in the document One Body, One Bread, which came out in 1998. It's a document from the bishops. It is important to emphasise that seeking or receiving a divorce where there are serious and objective reasons for it is not in itself a barrier to receiving Holy Communion. While those who have entered a second relationship after divorce are not permitted to participate fully in the sacraments, the Church warmly invites and encourages them to become involved in the life and prayer of the local Church community as much as possible. Thank you for listening and God bless you all. Oh.